All right, let's have a look at this character. Um, this is another Mixamo uh, motion capture asset. Uh, I'll include a link in the description. And our mission today is to just augment this animation somehow. Uh, we'll apply Ragdoll to, uh, uh, well, we'll start with the arm and we'll apply some physics to it. Uh, I'll apply physics to the whole body and have him sort of dance around on the ground. Uh, and yeah, just to you know, fool around with it and have a look at uh, what what we can do to uh, augment it with physics. And the first thing to do, uh, because you notice that the, the animation is only about 70 frames long, and uh, I'd like to be, I'd like it to be a bit longer. And it's, it looks like a loop, so I'm gonna try and uh, just duplicate the uh, the keys. And yeah, so we'll t I'll take the keys of the uh, of the whole character, and I'll just uh, duplicate them. So from from here. I'm going to do a copy keyframes and then a paste keyframes. And we'll do the same thing again with all the keyframes this time. So now we get four times the length. Copy keyframes and paste keyframes. And that should do it. So now we have a, a bit longer uh, of a uh, motion. And also it starts at uh, frame one, which is good. Uh, but the pose is not symmetrical, so just to make our assignment symmetrical as well, so we can tune our ragdoll shapes symmetrically, uh, I'm going to uh, add another, another frame to the top, so frame zero, and here I'm just going to uh, reset the uh, rotation and translation and then keyframe that. So now at frame zero, uh, the character is in, is in T-pose. And then from here we'll start assigning. So to assign, let's move into, uh, let's get some overlay so we can see what we're assigning to. Uh, actually, let's let's skip that and go straight to wireframes a bit easier to see. And um, we'll assign to, well, like I said, let's start with the arm and see what we get from there. Uh, we'll include the fingers too, because that, I think that can look quite nice. So thumb and the finger and finger and finger and finger. Something like that. Uh, I'm not going to bother assigning the uh, actual polygon shapes to it. We'll stick with capsules for this one. The next thing to do is to exit post mode, enter into our manipulator mode, and then change some shapes. So this can be a cube, something that matches the hand uh, approximately, just so that we have something for the fingers to attach to. And I'll make you a bit wider, wider still. Like the thicker you can make these, the more control you'll, you'll have over the, um, like the, the more effect stiffness we'll have. So something like this, something like this is fine. So now I expect, if I, you know, this one doesn't really matter. Now I expect we'll have a character uh, and the arm is going to do what the animation is doing. And probably the arm above should be a bit thicker. So again, that's as thick as you can make it. That looks fine. Let's return to shaded mode so we can see. And there we go. So you see on, on the first frame, uh, our animation starts. So the, the simulation has a sort of play catch up a number of frames in the beginning. Uh, we don't need the start frame anymore. So now we can go back to frame one and let that be our start frame. So, so we won't get that uh, uh, initial jump. And uh, this looks this looks good. So what can we do from here? So I mean, you, you already see that the simulation is doing a pretty good job following the animation. Uh, it's not 100% uh, following the animation. So you're already getting something out of Ragdoll. Uh, in this case, it's just like an, like a, like an offset. It's sort of um, averaging the animation. So if you wanted to sort of tone down an animation, this would be one way of doing it. Uh, but toning down is not that fun. So let's see if we can do something more more interesting. If I just select uh, any of the markers and in the uh, physics options, uh, actually this one, here we, have, here we have control over the individual marker that we've selected. So I can either tune the stiffness, say of the uh, upper arm, if we set the upper arm stiffness to say well, let's just set it to zero so we can see what it looks like. So now there's no stiffness between the clavicle and upper arm, which means that the upper arm will not follow the animation at all. So now we have a 
sort of a loose, <laughs> a lo <laughs> yeah, it's like the, it's like the arm is just hinged, like it's been a, it's been sort of hung on the shoulder, but the shoulder muscles don't do anything, but the elbow still does, and the fingers still do, so the elbow has the, like the, the angle between the upper arm and elbow, that, that is correct, like that is following this angle of the original animation, and likewise for the fingers, they're also doing what the original fingers was doing. It's just the upper arm that's a sort of a loose cannon. Uh, so if we change that, let's give it a slight, like 0.1. So now the upper arm is following the animation, but just 10 times less. Uh, and then how about 0 0.01? Now it's following the animation, but it's, you know, now it's a bit more relaxed. Uh, let's see if we can do the same for the lower arm. So if the lower arm is, well, if the lower arm is zero, we have the same thing. Now the upper arm is going to follow the animation, but the lower arm is just going to it's just gonna follow along, it's like a, like a tail. And uh, yeah, so that, we also have no limits in the arms, so like the elbow can bend in in every direction. Um, so let's see, what, let's see what happens if we do add some, some limits to it. So if the elbow was only free to move in this axis, so I'm gonna lock this axis, that's the Y, and I'm gonna lock this axis, uh, which is the, the X axis. So now it's only free to move in this axis. And in fact, it looks like it's starting outside of the, yeah. So it's starting outside the limit already. So I'm gonna move it inside the limit. So now we can bend a little bit inwards and a lot outwards until it becomes straight. So let's see how that looks like. So now we have a an arm that is, you know, it's loose, like it has no muscles, but it's also anatomically correct. So it cannot bend past the, uh, the elbow. Right, so now we have something that you know, like, it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of a more interesting move. Like, we have a different dance routine on the second arm. You know, that's not too bad. In fact, uh, I mean, let's see. What happens if we record this now? Let's have a look. You know, I think it looks pretty decent. <laughs> it's like a more uh, uh, hip dance routine. There we go. There we go. Oh, I like it. All right, so now that's, uh, that's recorded. Let's uh, hide all of Ragdoll. We don't need to see that. And we can just look at the the, the result. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. It's like, she's like slapping. <laughs> like a slapping. I like that. It's not bad. Uh, there was one instance, I think in the beginning here where it intersects with itself. Oh, okay, yeah, so a little bit here because we didn't really include the leg or the lower body in the simulation, so all we have to go on is the clavicle and the arm. So let's, uh, let's undo that record, so we're back to simulating. And um, I mean, we could include the leg to avoid that contact, but uh, you know, let's, uh, let's keep it going. Let's see if we can add some more body parts to her. I'm gonna go back to wireframe so I can see. Uh, let's add the other arm too. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna assign, uh, assign and connect. Yeah, that should be fine. Assign and connect. Uh, so now we have two clavicles and two arms. I'm gonna make this one a bit bigger just so we, so we have some symmetry. Uh, and that's actually that's a good point. We do, we assign this now on uh, frame one, which is not symmetrical. So now we don't. Now we cannot benefit from uh, symmetrical editing. I mean, it's not it's not that big a deal. Uh, so let's stick with a non-symmetrical character. And like before, uh, actually, let's assign to the uh, the fingers as well. So we have fingers on both sides. I mean, the fingers are not entirely necessary, but in the original clip, the uh, fingers are not doing much. I think the fingers are not really part of the motion capture to begin with. So whatever motion we get out of Ragdoll is just an extra bonus. So let's see, you, 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 okay, and then assign. And likewise for you guys, you guys, and you guys. Okay. And like before, I'm gonna make this a box. I'm gonna make you bigger. Something like this. Uh, again, just so that the fingers have somewhere to attach into. Um, we don't really want to leave any gaps where there wouldn't be gaps. In uh, in real life, right? So these, uh, let's say, for example, if we left if we left the fingers like this, then we have a gap here, and um, 
I mean, the solver can do it, but it will struggle. So the, the best results is what you get uh, when there's no gaps. So something like this. And let's also make the fingers a bit bigger like before. Uh, I don't want them to overlap because I want self collision to happen as well. Something like this. And likewise for the thumb. There we go. So now we have two arms. Uh, I expect that one of them will be more stiff because we haven't tuned the parameters on that yet. Let's get back in the shaded mode. And um, uh, like before, let's experiment with some of the values, like for the top arm. If we were to set you to a value of, well, let's try zero again. There we go. So now we have a one arm doing some slaps and the other arm being completely broken. <laughs> like, like, so let's give it some muscle, like 0.1, for example. That seems like a lot. How about 0.01? Okay, that's not bad. Uh, maybe for this one, the fingers are the things that are a bit looser. So how about the roots of the fingers um, and the first knuckle? Uh, we'll leave the last knuckle a bit stiff. So how about this? How about say uh, 0 .0, 0 0.01 on the fingers? Oh, now, we have <laughs> now we got some sass, not too shabby. Uh, I think in this case, the, um, the there's no self collisions on these fingers yet, so they're going to be all over the place. There's no limits either, so they're going to bend in all manner of ways. <laughs> okay, how about we add some limits onto them? Uh, something like this. Whoopsie daisy. Can we zoom in on that? Okay, he does not want to zoom in on that. Let's give it, give him some limits on the roots first. Uh, you, 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 and you. Limits. Uh, okay, these, these look huge. Let's see if we can tune the display on you. Something like this. In this case, I don't want any rotation in the... Uh, it looks like it's the... We want the z-axis to be the axis that moves. Uh, no, that doesn't look right. How about the y-axis? Yeah, that's the one. So now they can move up and down, um, but I don't want them to move that much up. So how about we limit the up and then only a little bit down. So now they're only free to move up and down and uh, not by much. So if we look at the, it's a bit, uh, a bit messy at the moment. If we look here, we can see that they, they're free to move a little bit upwards, but mostly downwards. And likewise for the other fingers, let's do the same thing. We'll lock you and again, they're much too big, something like this. You, 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 and you. So again, the y-axis is the one that follows that plane. And like before, we'll limit the top and something at the bottom. There we go. And because the tips are already quite stiff, uh, I'm not going to worry about a limit for them. The uh, the hand itself probably also needs some some limits. And uh, let's allow you to rotate mm, like this. Not so much side to side, not so much twisting. So now we can go up and down quite a lot, but mostly mostly down. So that's that looks pretty neat. I think that should be that should be sufficient. So now they're all quite loose, and the the hand uh, itself is loose as well. Let's see what happens. There we go. So now we have a we got some sass. Uh, well, I would say the the hand doesn't move all that nice. I would like it to move a bit more up. I'll give it some more liberty on the up. A bit less down, actually. And how about some even less stiffness? 0 0.005. There we go. Something like that. It's not too shabby. And are we getting any self-intersections? I mean, it looks like we... <laughs> oh, okay, there, there's some. Okay, uh, there, there's some. So in that case, let's add the uh, the legs and hip to the simulation, but let's not simulate them. We'll just let them be uh, sort of rigid. Uh, we'll let them be colliders only. 
So heading back into post mode, we can now select the discharge of leg and the other leg. Let's stick with the legs. So we'll just scale these up so that they also encompass the, um, the hip. And uh, we don't want to simulate these guys, so we only want them to uh, we want them to be entirely animated. So now they do exactly what the uh, character is doing. Uh, we'll make them a bit bigger than the mesh actually, because we're going to use these to to keep the fingers from uh, moving into the mesh of the hip. So if you see here, now I mean they're they're bigger than the legs because they're not actually being simulated. They're just keeping the fingers from intersecting. So you can see here when the fingers come down, and they're about to to intersect, but instead they get they get pushed away by the uh, the overly large legs. And we can now go right all over cord, and it should do what we expected it to do in the first place. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. All right, so that looks like it's done. If I now go and just collapse this group, we can also hide all of Ragdoll and uh, maybe look at the shaded version. We'll now find that our character is doing slaps and um, uh, what, what do we call it? <laughs> Sla slaps and sass. And uh, you know, it's looking pretty good, right? So remember the, the animation that we had, the, the original animation was uh, entirely looped. But now we've simulated the arm, so the arm is going to be not entirely looped. We get some uniqueness in the, in the animation, even though the original animation was only uh, 70 frames long and uh, cycled. So this could be useful for, uh, well, say, if you needed variation, if you needed 10 of these guys and you wanted to vary the animation a little bit so they could all stand on the same dance floor and not look like they are in, uh, identical clones to each other. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see uh, if we can render it and uh, call it a day.